the home school with A.M. Layard. Have I ever told you about Jamie Stanley Green? No. Jamie is only young, but he has a big problem. Everybody in his family treats him like a baby, and he's six. Today, we're going to find out more about Jamie and the other people in his family. And then we're going to do some activities. You might even need your PE kit. Enjoy. Jamie Stanley Green was the youngest member of the Green family. He was six, nearly seven. He was proud of the fact he knew more about crocodiles than anyone in his class. He was proud of the fact he carried a bag to school that was bigger than he was. And he was proud of the fact that he couldn't remember the last time he cried. But his family, he was the baby. He had the feeling that even when he was 60, they would still treat him like a baby. He had three older brothers and each brother had a different way of making Jamie feel very small. Brian, at 12, was the oldest brother and he didn't pay much attention to Jamie. In fact, Jamie could have been living on a remote island in the Pacific Ocean for all the notice Brian took of him. But occasionally, Brian would put down his book about aliens and pick up Jamie. Then he would turn Jamie upside down like a salt cellar and shake him to see if any bits fell off. Sam, the next oldest brother, was ten. Because he wasn't as big as Brian, he had come up with a different way of making his little brother feel small. He was a master of misleading information and he was always telling his brother a lie, feeding him a line. Jamie, he would say, if you brush your teeth every day, you will wear them out and have to wear false teeth like Gramps. Or... Jamie, Dad actually prefers salt in his coffee. Or his favourite. Jamie, did you know toilet paper is only for girls? Harry was the closest in age to Jamie. Too close, in fact. Just one school year separated them and only a couple of centimetres on the door where Mum measured them. So, for Harry... The need to prove Jamie was still a baby was not a game. It was a matter of life and death. The way he did this was to try to win all the time. His whole life was a race. Once his eyes opened for the day, the competition began. He would get dressed in seconds and race down the stairs in their three-storey house, elbowing Jamie out the way. Then he would demolish his enormous bowl of cornflakes in 30 seconds flat. He had to make it clear to anyone who might be watching that he, Harry, was better and bigger than Jamie. And then there was Mum. She was the worst. She didn't mean to be, but she was. She just couldn't stop mothering him. She insisted on helping him get dressed, brush his teeth, tie his laces, wipe his mouth, wipe his bottom, hear him read, pack his bag sort out his things, unpack his bag. She also had a habit of cheering far too loudly whenever he did anything remotely good with a football, marching him to and from school and holding his hand far too tightly when they needed to cross a road. She did none of these things for his brothers. Jamie didn't believe she ever had. But for him, she did everything. Lastly, there was Dad. He was okay. When he was at home. Time for our first activity. We're thinking about the characters in the story. We need to choose an emoji for each character. Let's start with Jamie. He's our main character. What emoji describes Jamie best? Draw it now. Press pause and draw your emoji now. For Jamie, I chose the flexed bicep because he needs to show everyone who's boss. Let's 
think about Brian now. He's the big brother. I'm an expert on big brothers because I've got two of them. They can be very annoying. What emoji best describes Brian? Press pause now while you draw Brian's emoji. I think Brian would like the alien for his emoji. Harry's turn. What emoji describes Harry? Remember, he's always in a race. Press pause now while you draw Harry's emoji. I think Harry would like the champion cup for his emoji. And Sam, the rascal. What emoji would you choose for Sam? Press pause and draw Sam's emoji now. This was easy. Sam gets the purple devil. Time for activity number two. Let's think about Sam. He's got a younger brother who will believe anything. Now it's your turn to be Sam. Think of a poster to put up in your house. Is it going to be in the bathroom? Do not touch. Is it going to be in the kitchen? What prank can you play? Let's have some fun. It could look something like this. Finally, our last activity and my favourite. It's time to be Harry. For Harry, life is a race. And that's just what we need when we're stuck indoors. A race. What you need to do is prepare your racetrack. First, you'll need to draw a plan of your house. You need to mark the start line and the finish line. This is what my map looks like. You start on the bed. There's a blue arrow with the number one. You run out of the room, down the corridor, into the dining room. The numbers are two, three, four, five. In the dining room, you have to crawl under the table. Then out of the dining room, up the stairs, and you can see there's a 10 and a star. That means 10 star jumps. Then you go back down the corridor into the lounge, where you can see there's some teddy bears next to the sofas. That means you have to crawl like a bear across the sofas and then back to the bed for the finish line. When you've got your racetrack ready, you need to get your competitors. I wonder who I could get to play in my house. Let's see. Next time in Fang, we follow Jamie to school where he meets the school bully.